Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. Today's video is going to be about how we built this board. This board is a dual drive build. It features Evolve's dual kingpin trucks um, with their 7 inch Evolve tires. It has two 6355 millimeter motors for a maximum power output of 5000 watts. It features a 40 inch long deck with two enclosures as opposed to one on the bottom for increased flex. This thing is fast, it's powerful, and it's extremely fun to ride. The remainder of this video is going to be showing you guys how we built this board, so stick around if you'd like to see that. Okay, so like we said before, there are two enclosures on this build, which means they're going to be spaced apart, one on the front for the battery and one on the rear for the electronics. We traced them in light pencils, so that way we knew where to drill holes to place the wire from in between, and then we drilled a hole in the deck for where the wire that will thread between the two enclosures will go. Make it the diameter of your wire, that way it can pass through the top and the bottom. From there, um, you'll need two holes for each set of wires, one in the front and one in the back, and then you can use a router to cut out part of the deck um, for a channel, that way the wires can pass in between. You want to make sure this channel is the thickness of two of your wires and the depth of the thickness of one of the wires. Next you can place the wire inside of the uh, channel and from there you can thread it through the holes, that way it goes from the bottom on top through the channel and then back through the bottom. You'll need two wires for this because there's a positive and negative going next to the mechanical system which will be using two of unique board 63mm Evolve motor mounts and these will be secured to the Evolve trucks using M5 bolts and nuts. Um, these are just screwed on to the trucks pretty simply. This build will be using two of Torqueboard's 6355 190kV e-power motors. These motors each have a maximum power output of 2500 watts. They will be spaced out by these laser cut um, wooden pieces, that way the shaft of the motor does not rub against the evolved tire because the shaft is so long that it will hit the evolved tire unless it's stepped back or the shaft is shaved down. The motor, of course, is then um, held into the motor mount using M4 bolts. We got some extra long ones, that way they would go all the way through the wooden piece, which is a quarter inch thick. The motor pulleys will be 15 tooth pulleys from torque boards, they're pretty standard and they're made of steel so they work very great and are durable. First place the keyway into the shaft of the motor and then you can slide the motor pulley over the shaft and it should slide right in but if not you might have to use a little force. The drive gears for this build are the 65 tooth all-terrain drive gears that come as part of the all-terrain conversion kit from Evolve. They snap right into the Evolve tires quite easily. They're made of plastic, which is not quite as durable, but they're very um, cheap and replaceable from the Evolve website if they ever do break. The gear pulley and the tire snap into place. Just make sure the inflation hole is on the outside when you place the gear in. The belt that we will be using is the 375mm by 15mm HTD5 belt. You can't use the one that comes as a part of the Evolve Alteration and Conversion Kit because it isn't long enough. You can just slide it over the motor pulley and then insert the wheel pulley and it should line up right into place. Because the trucks are top mounted, you have to mount the base plate into the deck and then you can put the hanger back on once it's through and mounted. This wasn't a 
problem for us because we already had to put the motor mounts and everything on. Once we mounted the truck to the deck, we realized that when the truck was turned, the motors would hit the deck, so we had to go back, take the truck apart, and then saw off the back of the deck to round it off, that way that when the truck turned, the motors wouldn't hit the deck. The battery that this build will be using is a Tennis 5P lithium ion battery from M Boards. It has a tennis charger that comes with it, as well as a charging port that's pretty plug and play. The entire battery itself, you pretty much just need to plug it into the, your electric skateboard and it'll start working. Um, it has a capacity of 10,000 milliamp hours and a power of 360 watt hours. Board is a dual drive, which means it has two VESCs, which means it needs a few accessories, including this VESC parallel connector and this CAN bus connector, which plugs in between the two VESCs. The two ESCs we'll be using are the Torque Boards ESC from um, DIY Electric Skateboard, and they're essentially just a VESC. They cost $99 each, and they're a great uh, option if you're looking to use a VESC or you're new to the game. They're not too expensive like many of the other um, VESCs out there. The wiring of the electronics of an electric skateboard build can be intimidating at first, but it's quite simple. First you plug in the VESX connector into the parallel connector, and then you take the other VESX connector and you plug it into the other connector on the parallel connector. From there you just plug in the canvas wires to the correct port on the VESC. The next step is to place the components loosely on the board. The rear enclosure will go over one of the connectors and the front enclosure will go over the other. In the rear enclosure we will be placing the electronics which is going to be both VESCs and the receiver for the remote controller. It plugs into the positive and negative that come out um, of the board and those just sit in the back waiting to be connected to the motors. The front XT60 connector that comes out of the board will plug into the battery. As opposed to a pre-built power switch, this board will be using a much cheaper option, which is simply a shorted XT90 key, which when you plug in completes the positive end of the circuit um, leading into the ESCs. You can plug in the receiver to the VESC by just using the one you plan to be the master VESC, and then you plug a male-to-male -male servo connector from the VESC into the receiver. Next, you connect the charging port by plugging in the two red connectors. The one from the battery should slide right into the red one on the charging port, and they should fit together easily. Once everything was all laid out, we plugged the phase wires from the motor into the phase wires from the VESC. You're going to have to make extender wires with 5mm males and female connectors on opposite ends because the motors are rear mounted and are farther away from where your ESCs will be placed. The next step was to program the VESCs, which was done using the BLDC tool. We upgraded the firmware to the latest one on our VESCs and then we program them according to the tennis battery and the dual drive. It's quite simple and there's plenty of tutorials out there. We're willing to make one if there's enough demand for it. We programmed both VESCs, connected the receiver and the remote, and all was going well until this happened. Fortunately for us, nothing got damaged in that fall, it was a little setback and we just had to clean things up. After that we continued building and we mounted the VESCs into the enclosure using some velcro. We also put the 
receiver and using Velcro. Next, we did the same thing except with the battery, putting plenty of Velcro strips all around the battery that way it would stay in nice and firmly. The next step was to install our percentage battery indicator and to do this we took the ESC enclosure and just drilled a ton of holes um, in the shape of a square and then used a box cutter to try to cut out the shape of the rectangle and eventually after some time and some sanding it worked out. The next step is to connect the percentage indicator into the circuit, which is done by connecting it in parallel by connecting the positive end to the positive wire after the power switch and the negative to the negative end after the power switch. We just cut some um, little holes in the wire by just taking a knife and opening it a little bit and then from there we soldered the two wires on. Next up was to make an opening in the enclosure for the loop key power switch, so we just traced the XT90 connector and then used the same drill method to drill a hole where the XT90 could be placed. Once the hole was large enough, we used some hot glue on the inside and outside of the enclosure to hold the female connector in place. Next we drilled a hole for the charging port for the battery to go through. This was pretty simple, we just drilled a circular hole and then you can place the power switch inside and use the retaining ring to hold it in. The next thing we did was to use an old yoga mat to cut out a piece of foam in the shape of the enclosure. This way we created kind of a seal that would dampen vibrations between the deck when it rattles and also seal water out. This is a very um, useful but not necessary thing to have in between your enclosure and the deck. Once both enclosures were in position, we drilled the holes through them and the deck so that bolts could go through. Once the holes were made, we placed the bolt through the top of the deck, through the yoga mat, and then through the enclosure, and then we screwed on a nut on top of it. For a finishing touch, we added some heat shrinkable braided cable around the phase wires of the motors, that way they wouldn't get damaged and that they would all stay together and look neat. Another thing we did was to hold the wires down with these ties that come with the Evolve trucks. They're nice and they just wrap around the cable and then go through the deck bolt so they hold the phase wire to the truck. Once this was done, we mounted the front truck and then put the tires on the front. 
Then for the finishing touch we put the gold GT badge in the top of the truck. Once we did this, the board was done, and this is what the finished project looked like. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it this far, please consider liking the video and subscribing. We finally made it to 400 subscribers, and we're really trying to grow our channel. Again, thanks a lot, and we hope to see you in the next video.